When we started working on the show, uh, we agreed from the very start that we didn't want to have another retrospective. So we decided that uh, we use Cage, so to say, as a starting point of the exhibition. The means we selected paintings or made our choice to trace back the roots from which Cage, the actual status quo of his work, really derived. The Cage paintings are, of course, very, very complex. They are probably among the most com complex works Richter ever did. When Richter made the decision to do these six paintings, he, he was first thinking about uh, going on with the silicate or strontium idea of works. And he had already the sketch of a new work of this kind, or uh, really uh, laid out on, on, on the canvas. But then suddenly he decided, and this is very typical for, for Richter's method of working, he, he got an idea and he changed it completely. It's again this process, which is, which is important for all of his abstract words, it's a process of, of creating and destroying of putting on paint, of taking away paint, and so on. And this gives his work a kind of rhythm that he is following. And he's in, if I may say that, in the cage of the painting. So the painting is a cage for him that he really can't get away of. The people are very curious to know how Richter does that. As you just saw in the exhibition, this woman coming to me asking how did he do that, this or that detail, how it is done. And I think in a certain sense it helps you when you know how he's doing that because I think it can inspire your own vision of the painting. Usually uh, the beginning of the process is the decision of what do you want to paint and then you start painting this idea. It can be a figurative one, it can be an abstract one, but we are used to think that you always had, the, that the idea for a painting is at the very beginning. In a certain sense it is, of course, with the abstract paintings of Richter in the same way, but this is very vague in the beginning. And then you have sometimes a very long process. I guess he worked over f about four months on, on, on the cage paintings, and within these four months, a lot of things happen to him and then at the very end he has to make the decision how it's finished and for me it's cage in this way. The interesting thing about working with Richter on the show for me was that he was explaining re really often that the abstract paintings and his photo paintings, that they are for him the same images. The photo paintings are as abstract as the abstract paintings are and vice versa, that the abstract paintings are as figurative as the photo paintings are. This is for a viewer. It's, it's, a, it's of course, it's a paradox and it's, it's very difficult to understand, but Mm. Richter is convinced that we are looking at each painting, at each image in the same way. And our interest is to figure something out, that we can see something that we know. He says, in, a, in, a, in these abstract paintings, we are scanning the painting and we are trying to look for something that reminds us of something. If you have such an approach to the paintings, of course also always having the titles in mind, uh, then you, you will find something and you will find also a figurative meaning probably in these paintings, which are of course not fixed. The only hint that Richter is, is giving us 
is the title, and that's why they are, they are so important. Bach, of course, means this little uh, river, which, which is also very obvious when, uh, when you look at the paintings. It gives you this, this idea of a water surface, of a moved water uh, surface flowing somewhere. Cage um, means, of course, yeah, you know that, <laughs> what cage means. It, in German, the term is Käfig, which is uh, not so different. It's very lucky that Cage and Bach, two of his favorite famous composers, that they have a name that has also a figurative meaning. It says a lot about, about Richter's approach between abstraction and, and figurativeness. <laughs>